Welcome to another session of Migration Talk Time with ATM. Um, it's been lots of inquiries since I released the last video and this is why I'm doing a second video about this new age care um, visa. I'm going to be talking about the skill assessment process and the pros and cons of the 482 and 186 visa subclasses. I am also going to be talking about some of the changes that have occurred or that have been released in the last couple of days. Lest I forget, I see you all, my new Pathfinders, you're welcome. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and to all my existing subscribers, thank you for sticking um, with me here on Australia Pathfinder. Um, you make shooting these videos um, worthwhile. So if you are watching this channel for the very first time, or you have been watching the videos but you've never subscribed now is the time to hit the subscribe and button and like and share this video so let's get started to the crux of the matter which is the um, age carer and nursing support officer skill assessment process i spoke extensively on this visa and the skills assessment process in my last video. Um, take your time to watch that video in order to understand the process better. As much as these two assessing bodies, ACWA and ANMAC, permit me to call them ANMAC, have released their skills assessment guidelines, um, only ANMAC assessing nursing support officer and personal care assistants um, have commenced their skill assessment. Over the weekend, I emailed ACWA and I got a response that they will let me know um, when their skill assessment will start and we also put up the notice on their website. I reckon it will start probably on the 1st of July 2023, uh, which is the new financial year. As part of my email to them, I also got clarification on the 30 hours um, work experience that they require for the assessment. They explain that what they require for the work experience is a minimum of 30 hours per week, irrespective of your contract um, term, whether it is full time, part time or casual, as long as um, there are at least 30 hours um, per week, you're good to go. Based on the feedback that I have received in the last couple of days, uh, I would also like to point out a few things. Um, I'll kick off with this. The skills assessment with ANMAC and ACWA um, does not guarantee you will get the 482 or 186 visa. However, you cannot get this visa, that's the, the um, HKL Labor Agreement visa, without a skills assessment from these two bodies. Upon receiving a positive skills assessment from either ACWA or ANMAC, you will need to apply for jobs to companies that offer sponsorship um, in Australia. You can find these companies or these job ads on Seek, Jora, LinkedIn, etc. Um, I will drop the website in the description so you'll see the links for you to explore these jobs and apply to them. If you know other websites where people can apply for these carer jobs, and they offer sponsorship please leave them in the comment section um, it would be nice to help others just an fyi um, most of these companies have initiated the process to be added to this labor agreement which means more employers will be coming on board um, to nominate applicant very soon moving on another tip to add when you are applying for jobs on these websites uh, make sure your cv or resume is in the australian format if you don't know what the format is, please check out this video um, right here. Um, I explained in details the format and all you need to know about making your CV right for the Australian job market. Remember to include that you now have a positive skill assessment on your CV. If the employer finds out that you don't have a skills assessment, they may be skeptical um, to offer you a job because it will set them back um, at least three to six months. For you to apply for assessment wait for the result process a job offer for you then wait for you your for your visa to be approved so it will take them a long time i would I suggest that you have your skill assessment ready and also on your cv make sure you list all qualifications certifications and trainings that you have had and have detailed job descriptions as well 
a good tip that i always recommend is to review your job descriptions uh, on your cv against the job descriptions of the job ads that have been posted on all this australia website look at the job ads and compare them with what you have on your job descriptions on top of that if you have multiple experiences you can get multiple um, skills assessment from acwa and and mark at the same time this will boost your chances it's up to you it's not compulsory just a recommendation when you start applying for these jobs and you are faced with the option of choosing between the two visas assigned to this labor agreement that is the 482 and 186 visa um, i will now go into details to provide the pros and cons of these two visa i have already explained the eligibility for each of these visas um, and their conditions in my last video so check it out Starting with the benefits of the 482 visa, the first thing on my list is it's an employer sponsored visa, which means it's not a point based system and does not require a federal or state nomination. Also, the English requirement for this visa is 5 in IELTS and it's equivalent compared to other skilled visa which require a minimum of 6, but actually you would need at least a minimum of 7 or 8 to even get. Um, nomination or probably get a better visa subclass. Thirdly, you naturally live and work in the city or town where your employer is located. This is a benefit um, to the applicant because you have a choice of applying to companies that are based in locations you wish to live in, um, which means you are not restricted to a location like some other visas. This also means you look at employer's location before you even apply. So that gives you that choice to be able to see the location of the job before you apply another benefit is that on 482 visa you can buy properties if you wish to and if you have the funds you can also change your employer if a new employer is willing to renominate you and lastly the pathway to permanent residence is guaranteed after two years if you are working with the same employer or you have a different employer in the industry willing to renominate you now to the cons um, the first is that it's not a permanent residence visa which means you don't get to enjoy some benefits like uh, medicare subsidized um, child care and other um, benefit that the people would PR um, enjoy secondly you will need to apply for permanent residence after two years which means uh, the process still continues after you have lived in australia for two years although this time it's going to be cheaper and requirements are really less stringent. Another downside to this uh, 482 is that you have to get a private health fund um, for yourself. That is, um, you go private because you don't have access to Medicare. This can be really expensive if you fall sick, have an emergency or get admitted to a hospital without a private health insurance. Having a private health cover um, saves you a lot of stress, but that comes at a cost. Furthermore, schooling for kids is free up to high school, but you pay some small fee for uniform and some other um, admin stuff in the school. If your kids are going to the university or if you want to study or your partner wants to study and you owe the 482 visa, you pay international student fee and not local fee. School fees for kids and adults also vary from state to state when you're on temporary and visa like 482. As much as it's one good benefit to buy a property on 482 visa, the downside is that you will have to pay foreign investment surcharge and because you're on temporary visa. This will set you back some thousands of dollars. I think the last time I checked was about 13,000 plus. Um, this could have been put back into the house as part of your um, deposit. In addition to the points above, um, you also need to choose your employer state wisely because you also need an employer to sponsor you for 186. It can be the same employer uh, who sponsored you for the 482 and you can also change your employer. Just in case the aged care work is not, is not working for you when you land here and you want to explore other opportunities or other industries, you can explore other PR pathways in the state you are living. Some states make their permanent migration process very easy, while others are they are proud. So, <laughs> so it can be a bit uh, not as easy as others.
This is not to put fear in anyone's mind because the labor agreement is simple. Two years or four or two, then you are eligible for 186 if you are still working in the industry. Diving straight to 186, it's a permanent residence visa, gives you unrestricted access to many benefits. In addition to the goodies I mentioned um, for 4H2, you can buy property without any extra fee or charge. You enjoy free healthcare, you have free education for your kids and for their primary and secondary education, and you also get to pay local fee um, for tertiary um, education. The downside of the 186 visa, of course there is, is that it's not an easy visa to get an employer to sponsor. Um, it's always not given on a platter because employers um, have more documentation to provide to the department to be able to nominate someone for 186, especially if they are offshore, which forces the employer to go the easy way, which is 4H2, which, because that requires less documentation from their end. Fortunately, there is no age requirement listed for these two visas, which I think is a fantastic news. To wrap up on this 482 versus 186 visa, I will say you should aim and request for the 186 visa from whichever employer is willing to sponsor you. And if they're offering 482, please go for that. And you can imagine how good it is when you're coming into a country, you are able to settle in faster because you already have a job that uh, you can start making money from. Just before I finish, I want to quickly touch on the two of the new changes that came up this week. The first one is that the Department of Home Affairs has announced that 191 visa, which is the PR visa for 491 orders, no longer has um, an income threshold. Um, in 2019, when the 491 visa was introduced, it was announced that applicants uh, would need to make a minimum of 53,900 Australian dollars for three years to be eligible for PR 191. But the department has announced um, this week um, that this is no longer required, which is a great news. Other news is that Vetesis, which is one of the assessing authorities, um, is changing location to Cremon in Victoria. And as you can see, their new location is now is now level 185 Cremon Street at Cremon 3121. So if your school is sending your transcript and certificate, uh, please use the email option or PO box address on their contact us page. If you have already sent your transcript to the address, no need to panic. Um, they would have done a mail redirection service that will transfer any mail post to their new address. Those are the two updates I have for you. And finally, don't forget our monthly Q&A session. It's happening tomorrow on the 24th of June. I will be answering questions on general Australia matters, especially the new HKF visa. Don't forget to invite your friends and family. Thank you for watching and I will see you again.